guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you four holiday inspired, fall inspired uh, recipes. The first one that we are starting off with is an eggnog latte. It is so easy but so delicious and perfect for the holiday season and it's just as good as the Starbucks version in my opinion. So I am starting out with making some espresso, um, whatever espresso you have. You could even, maybe if you don't have espresso, you can even do a very strong hot coffee. Um, maybe that would work, but personally I am using espresso because I happen to have espresso machine. And I'm also using a light eggnog and I'm putting that in my frother and you can use whatever eggnog, silk, silk nog or whatever you prefer and I'm just using the light version just just to save on a tiny bit of calories um froth frothing that up brewing my espresso right in my cup and then when the eggnog is done I just pour it over the espresso top it with a little bit of whipped cream and a sprinkling of nutmeg and it just is the perfect little hot espresso latte drink and like I said it's even better it's the same as Starbucks, but it saves you five or six bucks. The next recipe I'm sharing is a brie and apple panini. It has some rosemary in it, brie cheese, a little bit of cheddar, sliced apples, all kinds of delicious fall vibes in this panini. It makes a perfect little lunch, um, elevated, you know, a little different than the standard mom PB&J. <laughs> anyway, so starting out with making some caramelized onions. You guys know I talk about them often because I just love them and they are so easy to make. So on low heat with some butter, a little bit of oil, and sliced yellow onions. You can also add a little bit of salt to them. Some people add a little brown sugar, but I personally don't. And you just slow slow and go with these guys and just mix them all around until they turn that nice rich brown color and they turn so sweet and they make a perfect addition to this panini and then I am using sourdough bread also you guys gave me the trick of putting a wet paper towel underneath my cutting board and I finally did that and it works like a charm my cutting board was not sliding all around it was thank you for that. Um, so yeah, using a nice sourdough bread and doing some decent sized slices for our sandwiches. And nothing like some brie cheese for the fall. I honestly haven't used this a ton in my recipes, but I'm really enjoying it lately. And I personally cut off the white rind. It is edible, um, but I just personally sliced that off. So I was cutting up a couple of slices of brie cheese and we are using some shredded cheddar in the sandwich as well. You can mix and match um, a bunch of different cheeses if you'd like. And then choosing whatever apple you prefer, um, slice up some thin slices of apple and apple and brie go amazing together. Um, I had Macintosh in the fridge. You can use Honeycrisp, Gala, whatever type of apple you enjoy really. And then just make sure they're sort of thin slices, at least in my opinion. I like them to kind of warm up and cook a little bit. Still have a little bit of texture, of course, but you know, thin enough to kind of fit on a sandwich so that everything kind of melts together as well. Now assembly time. So I started out with some brie. Also, I forgot to put my dressing on this piece of bread, but we are using some honey mustard. Um, so I started out with some brie, slices of apples, and then I did a tiny touch of rosemary. I just kind of like ripped up some with my hand and sprinkled it on. Not a ton, but just enough to give that essence and like aroma of rosemary. It's just one of my favorite herbs and I absolutely love it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, fall time um, for sure. And then I am topping it as well with some shredded cheddar. Again, you can use kind of whatever cheese you like. I like brie and cheddar and apple. I like that combo a lot. And again, um, I am spreading my bread with some it's supposed to be honey mustard. Honestly, I was out of honey, so I just mixed some mayonnaise and Dijon mustard, but it would have been so much better if it was honey mustard, but just being real with you guys. And then I just spread some butter on the outside of the sandwich on both sides, and I am placing this in my George Foreman. I use it as a panini press. Um, if you have like one of those grills that sits on your stovetop, if you have 
um, a panini maker, if you have a George Foreman, they all work pretty much the same. Even if you don't have one of these, you can just put it in a pan with a press on top or something. But anyway, I ended up um, cooking this for just a few minutes until it was nice and golden brown on both sides and everything was melted. All the cheeses were melted on the inside. Oh, and I totally forgot I needed to add the caramelized onions on this first sandwich. I forgot and I had to do it like on the fly before everything melted. Um, but yeah, that caramelized onions adds, you. I feel like you need it. It made it so much better. The next recipe I am sharing is a homemade baked mac and cheese. It's a little bit of a different than a standard mac and cheese. Not much. Very simple to make, but it's very decadent and delicious. Definitely rich and cheesy. I didn't realize how much cheese apparently Sydney and I eat because all of our recipes have dairy and cheese in them. Sorry about that. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm starting out with some Gruyere. Okay, bear with me. I can barely say this. Gruyere cheese, <laughs> whatever. Um, and I am grating up a fresh block. And yes, it can be expensive, but oh, maybe on a special occasion, this mac and cheese would make an amazing side dish for Thanksgiving. Oh, it was so good. Anyway, so I am grating up about probably about a cup of that, I would say. And I'm also using for pasta, the cavatappi swirly pasta. I really like the integrity of it for a baked mac and cheese. It doesn't get super mushy. It's nice and, I don't know, I just like this particular noodle for a homemade mac and cheese. Next in the pot, I am making a roux, starting off with about a quarter cup of butter. And then once that melts, mixing in about a quarter cup of flour until the flour is nice and incorporated and in making sort of like a, a paste type texture. Once the flour was nice and combined with no lumps and everything was all mixed together, I started adding some milk. So I did about two cups of, I have 2% on hand, so that's the milk that I chose. You can use whatever milk you like, um, the higher fat, the richer, obviously. So I did two cups of that and I just whisked it all together. I had the sauce over about medium low heat and I kind of let it simmer and then once it does start simmering it thickens up really fast and then I seasoned everything with salt and pepper and you can add an optional nutmeg and this makes it a little a little nuttier and then working really quickly I shut off the burner so that there was no more heat you don't want anything to burn that would taste horrible um, and then I went ahead and added my cheeses I added the Gruyere <laughs> cheese and then a couple cups of shredded cheddar as well um, I just happen to have white cheddar on hand so mine came out a little bit more white looking um, obviously if you get the orange cheese it's gonna turn out like a normal mac and cheese color um, but either way it tastes delicious and then just mix everything together until all of the cheeses are nice and melted and then I did have my oven set to 375 and I ended up putting this in a casserole dish a buttered casserole dish and and I topped it with a bunch more shredded cheese on top and I baked this in the oven for about if I can remember correctly about 20 minutes until the top was nice and melted and golden and bubbly Next up, I made a broccoli cheese soup, easy broccoli cheese soup over the stove and starting out again with onions. Can you see? I kind of reused and repurposed my ingredients all week long. Um, so anyway, slicing up some yellow onion and popping this in a pan with some butter or oil, whatever you have. I ended up running out of regular butter, but I used a mix of vegetable oil and a, a little bit of margarine because um, that's what I had on hand. So you just want to cook the onions until they're translucent a little bit tender um, so about like three ish minutes and then after that I sprinkled in some flour and this again is to make like a roux uh, probably about three tablespoons is what I used I'm gonna link down below a recipe that I followed but I 
I mean, you know me, I didn't follow it, but I followed it at the same time. So I'm going to link down below a recipe for probably a larger batch. Um, and I'm just that way you have some measurements going, but this is what I ended up doing. Again, once the flour was combined, I added my liquids. So I did about a cup's worth of milk, maybe two cups worth, and then a quarter cup of light whipping cream, as well as about like a half a cup of chicken stock. Again, those are just loose measurements. If you want an actual recipe, it will be linked down below. Um, and I also really like matchstick carrots in my broccoli cheese soup. I like it for the texture and I really just enjoy like Panera Bread's version that has some. So I ended up slicing up some carrots super thin to add to the mix. Um, and I also seasoned everything, of course, with salt and pepper. And I ended up adding a little bit of um, garlic powder to the mix as well. So I let that come to a boil and thicken up just a little bit and then I ended up adding my shredded cheddar. I probably added, I don't know, a couple of handfuls worth of shredded cheddar um, enough to make it not like a, a sauce paste but enough to make it like a soup um, and then uh, this is when I also added my broccoli so I ended up using frozen broccoli that is what I had on hand you can use fresh or frozen whatever you like um, and then so I added the whole florets in and then as they were cooking and getting softer I broke them down with a knife and just to make them smaller pieces so that we were um, you know it was just more pleasant to eat as a soup Ending off the recipes with a holiday cocktail. Now I know this one might not be everyone's favorite, but I thought I would include it because it's an eggnog martini and it just screams Thanksgiving holiday season. So starting out with filling my mixing glass and my martini glass with ice and then also putting some water in the martini glass. This is to get the glass nice and chilled and cold. I have to have my martinis super, super cold. Um, if you have club soda, that works even better than water and ice. Um, so anyway, this recipe calls for Captain Morgan's or a spiced rum and vanilla vodka and I would do equal parts so probably like one ounce vanilla vodka one ounce captain and then I did about mm, two to three ounces worth of this eggnog you can use whatever eggnog you like golden eggnog would probably be even prettier because it has that yellow tinge to it and then shake everything up super super well so that you break up all those ice crystals and it gets nice and frothy and icy cold and then you're going to go ahead and strain it into your martini glass and then you can either from here top it with a little grated nutmeg or a little whipped cream and nutmeg, whatever you prefer. Honestly, it's not so thick. Like normal eggnog to me is super thick. This is definitely more of a cocktail with an essence of eggnog, especially because I use the light eggnog. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. Maybe give it a try, even if you're not the largest eggnog fan. If you just like the flavors, it turned out super yummy. So try it out with your family too. I hope you guys enjoyed today's fall kind of Thanksgiving inspired cook with me. I have so many more holiday recipes coming your way for the next couple of months. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Bye.